Hello everyone and welcome to the Mind Studio Fundamentals video. In this video we're going to be covering some foundational concepts that you can take as you start to build AI agents in Mind Studio. We're going to be covering concepts like what Mind Studio is, what AI agents are and how you should be thinking about AI agents, and we're going to look at a few examples of AI agents in the wild. Let's go ahead and get started. So what is Mind Studio? Well, Mind Studio is an integrated platform where you can build and operate AI agents. We have a an agent builder that allows you to create your own custom AI agents. You can test them, you get to evaluate the outputs, fine tune the agent until the output is correct, and then you get to deploy that agent to a bunch of different surfaces, which we'll talk about in just a second. As you start to operate these agents in the wild, you can observe them as they work. You get to analyze the results, analyze the cost, and you can integrate these agents anywhere that you'd like on other platforms as well. The other thing to note is that you're not the first people here. In fact, there have been over 200,000 AI agents that have been deployed across large enterprises, across government entities, across small businesses, and solopreneurs and individuals are creating AI agents to make themselves more productive and make their lives better. These AI agents can do a number of different things. They can connect to all kinds of different data sources, including your relational databases like Google Sheets, the vector databases where you can upload various files, data warehouses and data lakes. They can connect to the internet to pull in all sorts of information, and they can connect to other services and bring in information from those services via API. They also integrate everywhere, meaning you can have Mind Studio be an intelligence component inside of all kinds of different uh, products and services. You can use Mind Studio to call AI models. In Mind Studio, there are over 90 different AI models available, including models from OpenAI, Perplexity, Google, Meta, Anthropic. If it's a popular provider of an AI model, it is most likely available inside of Mind Studio, and the library continues to grow as new models become available. As you build these AI agents, the agents can perform these multi-step workflows and processes that can do a number of different things. And we'll talk about a few of those later on in this video. These agents can also work together in specialized roles to complete a larger task. So you can have one agent doing one specific thing. You can have another agent doing another specific thing. And all of these agents can work together and compile the output, send it back to you. So let's quickly talk talk about what an AI agent is and what, how we should be thinking about the term AI agent. To put it very simply, an AI agent is something that uses an AI model and does something for you. So AI makes a call to an AI model, agent does something for you. And that leaves us with a very broad definition of what an AI agent can be. Now, that means that AI agents can be all kinds of different things. And on Mind Studio, you can build AI agents that can do all kinds of different things. Let's take a look at a few of these things. You can deploy AI agents as AI powered web apps. These are agents that you build on Mind Studio. Once you publish them, you get this unique link and you can share that link out with anyone that you'd like. You can bookmark it. You can come back to it. You can embed it into a website and and you interact with the AI agent directly. The other way you can deploy these AI agents is via browser extension. So Mind Studio has a Chrome extension and you can create AI agents that are specifically built for that Chrome extension. What that means is that as you're browsing the web, you can click a button that triggers the AI agent to help you out with whatever task you want to accomplish on a specific website. Could be summarization, it could be data extraction. There are hundreds of different use cases for the browser extension. You can also run agents in the background as a scheduled automation, meaning you can set a schedule for this AI agent to run. The AI agent can do a number of different things in the background, and so this is perfect for repetitive tasks, things that you do every day, every week, every month. An AI agent can handle a good chunk of that work for you, if not all of that work for you. AI agents can also be triggered via email. 
So you can configure AI agents in Mind Studio to get a unique email address. And let's say you have a long email thread, you can simply CC or forward your thread to that particular email address and that will trigger the agent to run. It will have all of the information from that email and it can process that email and accomplish whatever task you'd like. AI agents can also be webhook endpoints, meaning that the agent can be triggered by external platforms, platforms like Zapier or Make.com or N8N or your own website, uh, hundreds of different platforms that can be accessed via webhook. And so you can have this uh, interaction on any of these different services or websites. You can send information to the AI agent from those services or websites, run the AI agent for intelligence processing and get back or, or complete a task, uh, after the uh, webhook, uh, is, is sent. Lastly, these things can be run uh, via API to perform uh, some sort of intelligence processing within your application. Some things are very difficult to accomplish in code or in a structured way, and AI is really good at navigating through sort of ambiguous tasks like this. So at the end of the day, you need to remember that AI agents are just workflows. They are just a set of sequential steps that you build in order to accomplish a task on your behalf. And Mind Studio has hundreds of different things that you can do as you're building these workflows in order to create the AI agent that you're looking to create, whether it's uh, a simple agent or a complex agent. We can sort of think of AI agents in three levels of complexity. There is calling an AI model, there's building multi-step workflows and processing, and then there's sort of AI logic, self-regulation. So let's quickly dive deep into each of these and we'll run through kind of how you should be thinking about each of these levels. So the first level is simply calling an AI model. This is just sending a message to an AI model and getting a response. So this is like me telling the AI model, write a personalized email template that I can use. It has no context outside of that individual message. And with that, information, it is going to uh, create the email template, send the email template back to me, and then I can use that email template however I'd like. This is the most basic pattern that you should become familiar with. It's using this generate text block, which we'll talk about in later videos, to make a call to an AI model and get a response from an AI model. As we mentioned, Mind Studio, you have access to over 90 different AI models from all the major providers. You're not stuck with being locked into a particular vendor and you can call these models as much as you like. Uh, we do not charge anything on top of what it costs to call that particular AI model. The second level at which we should be thinking about AI agents is via these multi-step automated workflows. And all that really means is that each step creates additional context that can be used when we call an AI model. So let's take our first example where we gener generated a personalized email template. Well, instead of generating the template that we then need to use, what if we uh, brought in a list of leads and we wanted the AI to write a personalized email for that particular lead. Well, we could do that simply by adding additional context in our workflow via a block. So if we asked the AI agent, write personalized email for every lead on this list, we would first need to provide it with the list. In this case, and in this uh, very simple example, this is like a Google sheet with information about each individual lead. It can retrieve that data and then send that data to an AI model for it to generate the personalized email for that particular lead. And at the very third level of complexity is the logic, the decision-making, the self-regulation of AI models. So in our last example here, it might generate an email, but we would still need to review that email to make sure that it applied all of the styling and, and uh, content guidelines that we had set out for it. It's simply generating an output for us. And with this third level of complexity, we can actually outsource that particular task to the AI as well. So rather than a human checking the AI's work, the agent can uh, step in and check itself. Uh, and you can configure that check 
uh, all beforehand as you're building the workflow. And so in this case, we can make that example a little bit more complex by saying write a personalized email for every lead on this list, make sure we follow the internal guidelines. This is not the actual prompt, this is kind of just the general task that we're trying to accomplish. And you can see in this workflow, we are retrieving the data of those leads, we are generating the uh, personalized email, and then we're using this AI logic and processing to check and make sure that it follows the guidelines that we have trained it on. And it's, it's going to check that, provide feedback, and regenerate that until it gets an output that is desirable. And then it will submit that output to us. And so most likely, it's going to save us a bunch of time on uh, the editing process uh, after the AI generates an output. So we talked about these at a very high level. Um, I want to reiterate that anybody can build AI agents. And in fact, most of the use cases that you're going to be building are likely going to fit within that level one or level two range, because that's where the majority of these use cases lie. And with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at a few different agents. Um, we're, first, we're going to start with the simple level one agent, and this agent is called Simplify. It takes content that we provide to it, and it simplifies that content and makes it easy to understand. So a good example of this for this simplify AI agent is inside of a YouTube video where we can use this agent to pull the YouTube transcript. And when we click on the agent, it's going to start running in the background. And if we look at how this agent is built, it is simply one block. It's just a call to an AI model. Now we are running this inside of the Chrome extension. And so we're able to provide it that YouTube transcript from the page that we are browsing. In this case, it's this YouTube page, but as it's processing, it's outputting, it's the single call and the single output here on the right hand side. So you can have hundreds and hundreds of different use cases just with this level one pattern alone. And we will cover how to do this in a separate video, but just to kind of illustrate uh, that the AI agent doesn't necessarily need to be super complex in order to have a major impact. Okay, let's take a look at a level two agent. In this agent, we have a sales collateral generator. And the sales collateral generator is able to take in information via a, a form that we've created and write personalized sales collateral for a particular lead. So if we look at the workflow for this, we have a user input block, which we're going to explain all in other videos, but essentially this creates a form. So if we preview this, uh, we can see that there is a form. And when we fill out this form, it's going to process that with AI because we've provided it with additional context. It has one call to an AI model in order to create uh, some pain points and do some background uh, processing to then provide that information to the final call to the AI model, which takes all of this information, compiles it together, and then gives us a final output. If we look at another level two agent that's a little bit different, this one is called the uh, product alternatives. And what this one does is we can provide it a URL and to a particular is we can provide it a URL to a particular product. And this one is going to analyze that product and it's going to generate this output for us where we are able to uh, get the website. It's going to find competitors and measure their strengths and weaknesses. And we have this really nice looking um, HTML output. And if we look at the agent build, we have this input, we have uh we're scraping the web here and then we're analyzing some products we are finding uh, and analyzing competitors it's then generating this asset because mind studio agents can generate text they can generate images they can generate all kinds of different assets and then they it displays it back to us so this is a example of a level two build that you might uh, create that has a few different steps but 
it's all in service of creating that context for the call to the AI model so that we can provide the model with as much information as possible and get the accurate result. Now, if we look at uh, level three and beyond, these agents become much more complex. They are much more powerful. They take a bit longer to run, but what we get is these incredible outputs. And in this case, we have this deep research. You give it a, a query, a question, and it's able to generate, uh, you know, an, uh, research paper in that, in this case, that was a, uh, that was a uh, one in French, but this one here, um, you know, you have this very long research paper that pulls quotes and stats and can find images on the internet and keep in mind, create charts. All of this is generated uh, via AI. And in fact, in many cases, it will also generate a full podcast for us with uh, AI generated personalities. And what an agent like this looks like um, is, you know, much more complex than the other agents that we've looked at. But once you master the skills uh, to build agents, you can build these incredibly powerful agents like this. And you can see here we have this logic block and this logic block uh, sees if the user's request is gibberish or if it's a valid request and it can enrich that request and it can ask us additional questions if it thinks it doesn't have enough information to do the proper research. It can that it then goes and does all sorts of different research here, compiles a report and then sources all of the images and creates all of the content and then displays it back to us. And so you can create all of these uh, different agents, but the point is that all of this is just a workflow. And so as you start to build your AI agents, and as you start to watch more videos in these courses and in these videos that we're going to be releasing on YouTube, you're going to start to learn all of these various levels of complexity. So with that, I hope you learned something about Mind Studio. I hope you learned something about AI agents. We're going to show you how to build all agents at all of these levels of complexity throughout the course of these videos. So make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay informed and stay up to date. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.